I'm Alicia Diggs, is the CEO and founder of I Will Live. Ms. Diggs became an HIV activist, educator, and speaker in 2004. Her goal is to help the community understand the importance of STD and STI prevention, advocating against stigma and discrimination, knowing your HIV status by getting tested, as well as living healthy and productive lives through empowerment and education. Alicia has spoken for various organizations who provide services for persons living with HIV in North Carolina. She is a member of the Presidential Advisory Council on HIV AIDS, PACA, Reprieve Community Advisory Board and Publications Committee, a North Carolina leader for Black AIDS Institute, Black Treatment Advocates Network, BTAN, the North Carolina State League for the Positive Women's Network USA, People Living with HIV Caucus, Wake Forest Baptist Health Anger Study Community Advisory Board, HIV Prevention Community Advisory Council, National Community Advisory Board for the Women's Interagency HIV Study, Sister Love 2020 Leading Women's Society and an Interagency HIV Study and a participant of I'm Still Surviving, a living woman's history of HIV AIDS. She has appeared on several news and radio stations and BET's Wrap It Up campaign. Ms. Diggs is a native of Philadelphia, PA, but resides in North Carolina. She has a bachelor's degree in social work, a master's degree in public health, and has completed doctoral courses for a PhD in public health. Ms. Deeds currently works for the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill Center for AIDS Research as the manager of the Office of Community Engagement. You will not want to miss this year's inspirational keynote address by Ms. Alicia Deeds, um, published author of the autobiography entitled Standing on My Healing from Tainted to Chosen. The next voice you will hear will be Miss Alicia Diggs. Hello, it is so good to see your beautiful faces today. First, I want you to give yourselves a round of applause. Did you see anywhere else? I am going to be transparent in this moment. It is always nervousness to get up in front of people. I don't want this to be a, a strict moment. I just want to be myself. I want you to be yourselves. I want everybody to relax. So if you will, just for me, take one deep breath. I don't know about you, but it made me feel better. <laughs> I needed it. <laughs> It's an honor to be up here today. I want to first thank Lashonda. Thank you so much for everything that you do. Thank you to the team of Seeds of Healing for everything that you all do, because you could have done anything else. In the beginning of the 80s, the world was faced with what we call HIV AIDS now. It was first believed to be a gay man's disease. They were shunned, they were stigmatized, they were isolated. They were already shunned and stigmatized and isolated because they were gay men. And then we get this disease that we all call HIV or AIDS. We later found that the disease not only affected gay men, but affected everybody. Women, men, anyone who was sexually active, 
anyone who is in any type of situation that calls them to get connected to this thing we call HIV and AIDS. Anyone who contracted the virus was stigmatized, ridiculed, regardless of who they were, what they looked like, where they lived, their sexual orientation. It didn't matter. If you were connected to HIV, you were shown, you were stigmatized, you were isolated. Activists created things like the Denver Principles to reject stigmatizing terms like AIDS victim, AIDS patient. And the term was then phased as patients with AIDS. But now in today's language, we as people living with HIV would like to be addressed as that people living with HIV because we are people first. We're not a virus. We're not a disease. We are people first. So if you were unfamiliar with the terms, that's just a little bit of free education. People living with HIV, not the AIDS person, not the HIV infected person. We're not infected. We're people full of love, full of grace. Organizations such as ACT UP, National Minority AIDS Council, the Latino Commission on AIDS, the Black AIDS Institute, or DAI, were formed to provide services, education, and platforms to amplify the voices of people living with HIV in communities who were marginalized. Advocates fought hard, really hard, for laws and policies that would demand equitable access and health care, as well as treatment, which is a human right. Equi equitable access to care is a human right. And we've been fighting for years, an unnecessary fight, an extremely unnecessary fight, but we'll keep fighting because it's a human right and we are human. In 1988, World AIDS Day came to life, which is what we're celebrating now. We honor every year those who were before us, those who are here now, and those who will walk the paths that we are walking right now. We honor the leaders who fought for us to have medication, those that have helped many of us live long and healthy lives. I've been living healthy, thriving with HIV for 20 years. Thriving. And I would hear people say, well, you don't look like it. But when you let me know what it looks like, or when you find that out, you let me know. Because you could never know what someone has or what someone is dealing with based on the way they look, based on what they wear, based on anything. You never know. Everyone in this room, one out of three people could be living with HIV. You have no idea, unless you go get tested. We honor the 36 million people who have died as a result of complications of HIV. We honor the allies who stood in the gap for persons living with HIV, those affected by HIV. Today and every day, we honor and we lift up those who were stigmatized, isolated, and ridiculed because they were living with a disease that others didn't take the time to understand so that they can show love, compassion, comfort, and support. We honor those who are still here fighting for the laws to be changed so that we can have equal and quality care and health access. We honor those who are fighting for education and prevention tools, for stigmatizing laws to be removed, and for the respect and love that every person desires and deserves, regardless to a diagnosis, regardless to sexuality, regardless to gender identity, regardless to race and nationality. As, 
As mentioned earlier, we have great advances in medication. Where we have gone from people taking 30 to 40 pills a day, which I cannot wrap my head around at all. I, I just can't. And for the 20 years that I've been living and thriving with HIV, I have friends who are still living, long-term survivors from the 80s. And I remember the stories that of how I took 30 and 40 pills a day. And I'm like, how? How? But they did it. They did it and they're still here and they're living and thriving. So we went for the 30 to 40 pills a day to taking one pill a day. Because of those before me, I get to take one pill a day. And now there are injectables that people can take once a month. That right there makes me emotional. Because I'll share a little bit. For 10 years, I was considered a non-progressive, which means that my immune system was fighting off the virus by itself. I was afraid of studies and trials because I felt like I can't trust scientists. I can't trust doctors. So I don't know what you're going to do to me. All I know is what I saw as a young girl coming up in the 80s, people dropping like flies from this thing called HIV. When I was coming up, it was called Brittany. First, there was no name. Then there were some type of letters and numbers. And then I saw him grid before there was AIDS. And people were disappearing. And my big brother, rest his soul, he was a same gender loving man. And those who don't know that terminology, terminology, instead of calling people gay and all of the other stigmatizing names, people who love people, they just love. I had to realize that and don't get it twisted. I'm not up here like I've always been who I am because I wasn't, I was ignorant at one point. And I'm not ashamed to say, I was ignorant and I needed people to teach me. And those same people who were stigmatized and shunned and ridiculed were the very same people who lifted me up in this illness. They were the same people who educated me and showed me the love that I didn't get from my family who rejected me because I was a with HIV. I just had to share that, <laughs> that at one point, I didn't have to take medication. But life happens. You start to share your status and people look at you strange or people walk away from you or people don't talk to you anymore or people say things like, ugh. The list goes on. And over time, the D word became a huge part of my life, depression. Depression is mental health. I had depression very bad. My immune system started to crash on me. And I watched what I call numbers, my labs, my CD4, which I say are my soldiers that fight off infection, my viral load, the amount of virus that's in my body. The viral load started to take control of my soldiers that were fighting and fighting. And I'm speaking louder because I know they're speaking a little louder in the kitchen. They just need to come in and <laughs> But I noticed that my immune system was fighting against me. And I said, it's time for meds, but I don't want them. Because I was afraid of what I saw in the 80s and the 90s. I knew that science had advanced and medication was available. And I could possibly not get sick from the side effects, but I was afraid. Alicia, when you take this pill, it is the rest of your life. Do I want to do this for the rest of my life? Well, Alicia, you have a disease that the scientists say that they can't get rid of, so they have to deal with that for the rest of your life. Well, I want to see grandchildren. I want to see grandchildren. I don't know if I'm going to make it to see them. So I made the decision, and I got the opportunity to take one pill, not 30, not 40, like my brothers and sisters before me, one pill. And I did fine with it. I did well with it. And I became undetectable. My sister Benita talked about you equals you. 
I wasn't surprised about you with you. I wasn't. Because I knew that people living with HIV, taking medication were healthy. Because I was. And I said, if I'm healthy, everybody else who's living with HIV on medication has to be healthy. If I'm not passing the virus to my sexual partner, I have to be healthy. And so does my brothers and sisters living with HIV on medication as well. So when Yuli Kujun came out, I was happy. Not surprised that I was like, it's about time. And hopefully everybody listens and understands that as long as someone living with HIV is on medication, undetectable, they cannot, not they might not, they cannot transmit the virus to their sexual partner. That is huge. That is amazing. Put your hands together. One more time. I'm a bit animated because we came a long way. And years ago, God was shy. I was so shy. And I had low self esteem. And it was elevated when HIV became a part of my life. And I had to find a way to get through that. And my brothers and sisters in the fight helped me. And my research of those who fought before me helped me to say if they can do it, I can do it. And even with all of the work that we have done in the past and are currently doing, and everything that I just said, our communities are still marginalized. Our communities are still stigmatized. Our communities are still isolated and many times ignored. We have a thing with HIV and aging. You have people who may have been diagnosed in the 80s or the 90s, but now they're in their 50s and 60s and some even in their 70s and 80s and are still living, but they're isolated because times are different back then than they were now. We're more open and sexually free and our voices are wide, but it wasn't that way back then. It wasn't. And then you have those who are in same gender loving relationships or may not even want to take on a gender. I'm learning all of these new things. But they're isolated and rejected by family because family doesn't understand or we're stuck in our traditions or we're using spirituality and religion to isolate and hurt people. Well, the God that I serve says to love everybody. Amen. And I had to ask. How can I be who I am and do what I do with ISIS? And God told me, they're still my children. It's not about you. And that shut me all the way down. So I love everybody. People say, well, you can't love everybody. I do, because if you want to be mean and evil, that's on you. But that's between you and whoever you serve. It has nothing to do with me, because I'm going to continue to love on you. Because my love is going to actually hurt you. It's going to hurt you because you're sitting back in uneducated and stigmatizing people. And this is not directly to you. I had to say that real quick because I felt it in my spirit. Like, mm -hmm. it's not directed to you. I'm just talking. You feel that. People feel that. I'm going to stigmatize this person. I'm going to hurt this person. But I'm going to show you love because that's going to check you. And you're going to change some kind of way through the love that I show you. With all of the stigma and all of the isolation, we can stop and we won't stop until everybody's voice is heard, until your voice is heard, each and every person in here. If you've never stood on a platform, not to say that you have to, if it's in front of your family, friends, to stand up for what's right for this movement, your voice needs to be heard. They need to hear it. Make it happen if it has to. As many of you know, AIDS stands for Fire Immunodeficiency Syndrome. So I'm going to say this to my family of people living with and affected by this disease. I'm going to take these letters and I call you awesome. As you continue to stand strong during these times, invaluable, because you are extremely useful and vital and a vital part in creating great change in this movement. 
deserving because you are worthy of all great things and to be treated like the king and the queen that you are, that God created you in. You are destined for greatness, special, because you are superior, great, remarkable, and unique. And don't you ever, ever forget that. HIV stands for Human Immunodeficiency Virus. You are not a virus. You are not the diagnosis that you received. I don't care what anybody says to you. You are not a virus. You are not the diagnosis that you received. Whether it's HIV, diabetes, cancer, it doesn't matter. You are not a diagnosis. You are heroic because not everyone can walk in your shoes. Not everyone can do what you do. You had a choice to give up and give in, but you stood strong and you stayed the course. Important. You are important. You are needed. You are loved. You are somebody. There are people out there watching you. There are people out there who need you. There are people out there who need your story. You are greatness. So go be great. And don't let anyone or anything stop you. Victorious. Because you made it this far. And you continue to press through. To all our allies, our supporters, from the past, the present, and those coming up to the future. Thank you. Thank you for standing up for others who couldn't stand up for themselves. Thank you for being a voice for the voiceless. Thank you for never giving up on the fight. It's been 40 plus years, and many of you have been doing this thing for years. Many of you are not diagnosed with HIV. Many of you may be 100% healthy and don't have any type of diagnosis at all, but you're in this fight and you're here for people like me, for people like my brothers and sisters who are taking medication every day. Thank you. Know that you are loved. Know that you matter. Know that you are needed. Don't think that what you are doing is small. Everything is important. Everything is needed. Everything matters. You matter. I don't care what you look like. I don't care your shade. I don't care your spiritual background. I don't care your gender, your sexuality. It does not matter if your hair is long, short, bald, you're fat, you're tall, you're skinny. You daggone matter. And everything that you do matters. Please know that. If nobody told you today that they love you, I love you. I don't know all of you, but I love you. And it ain't a daggone thing you can do about it. Period. Know that you are loved, know you are important, know you are needed. And those who don't know, get a little bit of education. Google is your best friend. Google is your buddy. We'll hook you up with so much information. And if you don't trust the internet, you have people like me who are in this fight. You have seeds of healing like who are in the fight. There's so many. Just go and talk. If you don't understand the transgender community, talk to a transgender person. They are okay. They want you to talk to them so they can help you understand how to respect them and talk to them like people. If you don't understand the LGBTQ community plus because you're not a part of it, ask questions. You have not because you ask not. And one final thing. People like me like hugs. Hugs for people living with HIV give us 10 T cells. And I'm going to need some because we've been in a pandemic. Thank y'all so much.